So in the last session, we have discussed about uh, the user input, how we can take input from the user. Or uskeliya, we have seen several examples. All those examples are also available in the dashboard. This is the dashboard uh, in which uh, these are the examples which we have discussed in the last session. Uh, this is a Java scanner class. This is scanner class is available in the Java repository package. And whenever we have to take input, we create an object of this scanner class. And with the help of this SC object, we call a function. This function is responsible for taking input from the user. Uh, usually, there are eight basic J types inputs, uh, next boolean, next write, next trouble. This we have already discussed. And now, uh, today, we'll move forward and uh, we'll discuss the operators. So if you go back to your dashboard in the next session, you can see we have Java operators. So you can go through the these operators, uh, the detail section is uh, available here, but I'll uh, explain it uh, with the help of some more examples. So what is an operator? The operator is basically, it is a symbol. A symbol which tells the computer what type of operation is to be performed. For example, there can be arithmetical operation to be performed. Arithmetical operation. So the symbols will be plus symbol, then it can be minus symbol, then it can be multiplication, then it can be division, and then there is one more modulo division that gives the remainder that comes after the divide. Then we have a relational operator in the relational operator, we can have greater than, greater than equals to, less than, less than equals to. We can compare two numbers using equals to and also not equals to. So these are the relational operator. Then there are some logical operators. We'll see one example each to understand uh, all the operators better. Then we have logical operators in which we have and or and is written double ampersand sign or is written double pipe sign and not is the exclamation symbol now suppose we have to check two numbers and there are multiple conditions that if there is only one condition we we'll write if a is greater than b or we can write if salary is greater than 25,000. Then we use these relational operator. But when there are more than one condition, like if salary is greater than 25,000 and age is greater than 35, then if we have to perform some action, then in between two conditions, we use and or and not. These are the logical operators. If we use and, that it means that both these conditions have to be true. Suppose we are giving, in this particular condition, we are giving a bonus of, we'll write complete programs also, a bonus of 5,000. So, if the salary of the employee is greater than 25,000, suppose salary of the employee is uh, 30,000 and age of the employee is 40 years, then both these conditions is true, then only bonus will be 5,000. But if we use OR operator here, it means any of the condition is true, then this statement will be executed. So if either salary is greater than 35,000 or age is greater than 35 or both these conditions is true, then OR will be true. Any of the condition is true, this uh, condition, the whole condition will be assumed to be true. So in case of OR, in case of OR operator, which we write as double pipe sign, both uh, any one condition can be true. Condition have to be true. But in case of and, 
in case of and when we write it this way both the conditions have to be true both the conditions have to be true for example here if salary is equals to 50000 age is equals to 30 years so one condition is true and bonus will be 5000 but if we write the same thing in case 2 here and we write it as and then this condition will not be true because both the conditions are not true so this is how we use the operators so these are the commonly used operators the for uh, operations arithmetical operations like in the last session uh, we discuss how we can uh, do the addition or average calculation then we use arithmetical operator and in relational in condition we use the relational operator when there are one condition then it can be written simply like this when there are multiple condition then we write it with the help of logical operators for more than one condition so logical operators are for more than one conditions arithmetical operators are for normal operations additions relational operators used in condition and then we have logical operators which are used in case of more than one condition now when there will be more than one condition all the conditions can be true either of the condition can be true that is uh, taken care of using the and operator or the or operator so these are the logical operators then we have increment operator suppose we have the plus plus then similarly the decrement operator we have minus minus for example if we have i is equals to 5 and we write i plus plus this is equivalent to this is equivalent to i is equals to i plus 1 Similarly, if i is equal to 5 and we write i minus minus, then it is equivalent to i is equal to i minus 1. So this is how the operators are used. Now, we'll try to implement these or some of these in different types of programs. So I'll come to the program and we'll see how these operators are written in the program. So I'll come to this example. This is the first example in Java. Uh, this checks whether the number entered by the user is an odd number or an even number. So whenever we have a number and we divide the number by two, then the remainder is zero or the remainder is one. Suppose we have, suppose we have number equals to five. Now, when we divide the number uh, 5 by 2. Then the, uh, this is the quotient. The quotient is this and for the remainder we have num modulo division person symbol 2. So if we divide, suppose the number is 7, if we divide 7 by 2, the quotient will be 3. So this is 3. And the remainder is one. So the remainder is one. Now, if this number is eight, the quotient will be four and the remainder will be zero. So for all odd numbers, the remainder, uh, this is how we can calculate the remainder. The remainder will be one. So the logic is we'll divide the number by two, we'll check what is the remainder. And if the remainder is equal equals to zero, then it is even. Otherwise, it is odd. So here you can see in this example, we give a message, enter a number. The number entered by the user is an integer number that is accepted in the variable number. 
Now we divide the number by two and the result of this number, we check whether it is equals to. So whenever we check whether the number is equals to another number, we use double equals to symbol. Whenever we use to store a value, we use a single equals to. This is for single equals to. Like I write x equals to two. That means I'm storing two in the variable x. But when I, I write x equals to equals to two, it means I am checking whether the number x is equals to two or not. So we are dividing the number by two and we are checking whether it is zero or not. If this is equals to zero, we'll print the number is even, otherwise we'll print the number is wrong. So quickly we'll run this program and check how it is uh, working. Let me... At the bottom, you can see I'm giving seven. So seven is odd. I'll run this program again. I'll go here and I'll run this program again. It is asking for our numbers. So I give 88. So 88 is well. Why? Because the remainder will be zero. So in this program, we are using two operators. One is the modulo division operator one is the equals to operator so this is the uh, one operator which is checking whether the left side value and right side value is same or not and this is the arithmetical operation being performed by the number is being divided by two and here we use the if statement now the if statement we write it this way if then there is a condition. If this condition is true, the statements within the opening and closing braces will be executed. Otherwise, the statements within after the else bracket will be executed. So if we enter two, two by two is zero. So it will show two is even. If I write three, two by two is equals to one. That is not equals to zero. It will come to the else part and print three is all. Now let us come to the second example. This is a grade checker. In this grade checker example, we have to input grade of uh, the uh, student. And if it is uh, greater than 90, the grade is greater than 90, we print A. If it is greater than 80, we print B, similar to C, D, and F. So there are more than one conditions. If first condition is true, then 90 will be, uh, A will be printed, then otherwise, it will check the second condition. If the second condition is true, B will be printed. Otherwise, it will check the third condition and it will go on. If uh, uh, neither of these conditions are true, then it will print grade is F. So let us quickly run this program. Start the button. Enter the grade. So suppose I enter 24. So 24 it will print grade is F. Why? Because none of these conditions will be true. So it is going to be a grade is F. I'll run this program again and I'll check uh, how it is performing. So if I run this program again, your grade, suppose I enter 95, your grade is B. If I go here, run this program again, and I enter the value as suppose 75, then your grade is C. 75 is greater than 75 is greater than 70. Yes, this condition is true. So it is printing your grade is C. So this is how we write the program when there are multiple uh, statements to be checked. Now, uh, here also you can see these are the relational operators that we have used in the program. Then we have a third example. Here we are checking whether the year entered by the user is a leap year. Leap year is a year uh, which uh, must be divided by four and must be divided by 100. There are two conditions for uh, a leap year. So either the year should be divided by four and at the same time, it should not be divided by 100 or the year should be divided by 400. So if the year is divided by 400, then it is a leap year. 
or if the year is divided by 4 but year is not divided by 100 then it is a leap year. So there are two conditions for a leap year. This is the first condition for a year to be leap year. Like suppose year 2000. So if we check year 2000, 2000 will be divided by 4 but 2000 uh, divided by 100 is not equal to 0 will not be uh, this condition is not true. So let me run to explain it better. It is asking for the year. Suppose I enter 2024. 2024 is a leap year. 2024 is a leap year. Why is a leap year? Because 2024 is divided by 4 and when we divide 2024 by 100 the remainder is not equal to 0. When we divide it by 100 the remainder is not equal to 0. If I run the same program again, if I come here I run the same program again and I check the year 2000. So year 2000 is a leap year. So here is it is showing it is a leap year but there are some conditions where it will show it is not a leap year. So let me check for another value. Suppose I check 2022. Sorry. I check 2022. 2023 is not a leap year. So there, when there are multiple conditions, see in the first example, we are giving only one condition. Okay. In the second example, we are giving different conditions, different statements. Then in third example, we are giving two conditions, first condition and the second condition. And in the first condition itself, there are again two conditions which are joined by the AND operator. So first condition is up till here in the yellow bracket. So these are this is the method to write. We are using these examples just to show you how different conditions can be written using the different operators that we have just discussed. Now, this is the fourth example where we check the number whether it is a number is positive, negative, or zero. So if the number is greater than zero, it will be positive. If it is less than zero, it is negative. If it is not positive or negative, it is a zero number. So let me run the program. It will ask me for a number. So I give 78. 78 is positive. Now suppose I run the, sorry, I run the same program again. I run the same program again, I give minus A, or says minus it is negative. I run the same program again and give zero, so it will be zero. Now, this is the fifth example in which we are classifying the age. So, we are taking age input from the user. If age is less than zero, so age cannot be less than zero, it will be an invalid age. If age is less than 12, then you are a child. If age, age is less than 19, you are a teenager. And if age is less than equal to 65, you are an adult. Otherwise, you are a senior citizen. So if we run the program, start debugging. If we give the age as minus 9, a minus age. So minus cannot be a valid age. So it is thinking invalid age. Okay. I'll run the same program again. I'll enter the age as uh, 35 and it says you are an adult. So this is how different types of conditions are used in different situations. We have used five different situations to understand what is an operator and how these operators can be used in Java. I'll come to the notepad again where we have discussed operator. The operator is a symbol and it is uh, used to calculate, to check conditions. There are different types of operators. We understand some more operators uh, in the coming session. And these are the examples that we have just now learned and used in the program. Try to implement this. Try to run this. Uh, understand in your dashboard also. If you go to your dashboard, uh, there are different types of operators 
uh, your G operator, bind G operators. Um, every operator is discussed with examples. You can try to understand those and then try to run the program that you have just now discussed.